Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name's Renee and this is New Angel Tarot. Um, today I'm going to be doing a couple of book reviews um, and I'm saying a couple because it's by the same author and I haven't done a book review for a while and I said I was going to be doing more book reviews as part of this channel. Um, but I finally got round to reading both of these books. Um, I read through both of them really, really quickly. They're, they're actually um, very readable books. Um, and you know, they're around 200 odd pages each. Um, it's written, these two books I'm going to be talking about today are about magic and angels. So the first book I'm going to be talking about is High Magic by Damien Eccles. Um, if you haven't heard of who Damien Eccles is, he was um, part of a, a group of, or well, three boys who were committed um, for murder, um, uh, life sentences in the 90s wrongly accused um, and it was a huge injustice but finally released in 2011 but Damien was deemed the ringleader of um, this crime and um, basically he was the only person out of the three who was sentenced on death row so this book was sort of born out of his imprisonment and practice of magic uh, on a daily basis for over nearly 20 years within a prison cell um, which is just just mind-blowing um if you haven't checked out his the documentaries um look it's been around for a while but um you know like me you may or may not have heard of him before and i will leave the links below you can actually check out uh the documentaries there are three is three parts to the documentaries um part one two and three um you can now watch them on binge here in australia but um, again, I'll just leave the links below and wherever you're watching from, I'm sure you'll find it somewhere, whether it be on YouTube or a different streaming platform. And the series is called Paradise Lost. So I will leave further links below and you can find out more about Damien's story. Um, but for today, we're going to be talking about the two books that he's written. So the first book um, in regard to magic uh, he put out was is called High Magic. Um, and it's produced by a company called Sounds True in Canada. And look, you know, it's it's part of sort of the new age um, sort of publishing realm. It's not Hay House. It's a little bit more gritty than that. But at the end of the day, um, look, this is a really nice um, publication. I'm going to walk you through it in a minute. And then second to that, he also put out this other books uh, after the, this first one here called Angels and Archangels um, by Damien Eccles. And this is, again, um, more um, magic, but we're talking about uh, invoking angels from, you know, the angel, the realm of angel. Um, and one of the things that's really important to understand about both of these books and when we use the phrase magic, um, you know, there's been obviously over, you know, movies and, and the media and all that sort of thing over however many years, we see the pentagram and, and Halloween and all this kind of spooky stuff that we consider um, you know, commercialized or a different sort of paradigm, even the term angels and demons. Now, if you follow me on Instagram and you may have just checked out one of the recent posts I made in the YouTube community, angel, angels and demons um, are just a paradigm. Angels are the realm of our higher consciousness and demons are the world of our shadow side or our subconscious level. So, you know, or as, as other people have also coined it as, um, you know, our shadow side. But the realm of angel work, let's just keep continue with that, um, you know, label, um, is actually working with um, quantum physics. And we're working with energy, okay, because there's lots of different terms for it. You know, the Buddhists call it one thing, you know, there's, um, you know, it's called Dharma in some religions and Prana in other religions and Juju in other religions. Whatever you want to call it, it's energy, okay? That's what we're working with. It's not a religion. It's a science, okay? So when we're, when we're working with certain practice, and it's not just about reading the books either, it's about putting these things into practice. Therefore, breathing exercises, meditation, um, and, and actual, um, you know, um, magic. Now, the magic that stems from these particular books are not just breathing exercises and meditation. They are, um, it's an amalgamation and a really digestible format. And I think that's why these two books, are, they work hand in hand. But at the same time, it's a super, super simple um, way to digest um, high magic. Okay. There's two ways of looking at it. Low magic is what's on the earth, on the earth. Okay. So earthbound magic. 
low magic is stuff that we can touch things that bring us um you know uh, tactile um benefit so that would be herbs or crystals or working with candles and those sorts of things that's that's low magic when we're talking about high magic we're talking about tapping into um you know a, a realm of consciousness that we don't sort of immerse ourselves or open ourselves up to on a on a day-to-day -day basis um, we work in a very sort of unconscious sort of um, mode of existence and when we become more conscious that means we start seeing things that other people can't see this includes your psychic abilities this includes um, you know sensing when things aren't quite right you know this is all about our, our extrasensory perception okay um, everybody has it you don't have to be um, you know a, a, you know a brainiac to work this out this is very very simplistic um, methodology and it's born out of um, obviously some of the great magicians what we call great magicians being Alistair Crowley um, John D um, you know uh, John Michael Greer there's there's like a long list you know Dion Fortune um, yeah there's there's just a ton of people who have practiced magic especially in the late 1800s when the hermetic order of the golden dawn was originally formed now this was happening way beyond that way before that but leading up to that that's sort of when it became more westernized you know what i mean um i think there's a phrase in the book saying someone said um, magic is the western westernized yoga or something like that i think that's the phrase but correct me if i'm wrong all right, so I'm going to stop babbling and talk about these books uh, one at a time. So I'll talk about the first book first, which makes sense. High Magic, um, Guide to Spiritual Practices That Saved My Life on Death Row by Damien Eccles. It's, it's got a forward here by Eddie Vedder uh, from Pearl Jam. There's great, um, you know, praises on the back here. People from like Tony Robbins, um, Sharon and Ozzy Osbourne, um, Peter Jackson, who created Lord of the Rings, Tony Hawk, uh, skateboarder. But he says here um, on the back, I owe my life to DNA evidence, the HBO documentaries and so many people from around the world who protested on my behalf. But the short version and the point of this book is simple. Magic saved my life. Magic is the only thing in prison that gave my life purpose and kept me sane. Magic was the only thing I had to protect myself with. And that's why, and that's what this book is about. The practices that kept me alive for nearly two decades on death row. So when we look at the pentagram, there are rituals in here, the lesser banishing, the lesser invoking. Um, these are magical practices that have also been passed through to Wiccan um, traditions. Look, no matter which religion you look at, which, you know, school of thought, it's actually all the same. Okay. So let's look at high magic. I also want to take the um, jacket cover off because the reason why i'm going to do this is i think the original um, publications as well this is a really cool hardback okay so this is a really great book and it's really affordable as well it's like 25 dollars us which is you know ridiculously cheap um you know the perfect bound is really well done um, the quality of the book itself is actually quite good um and you've got we've got this beautiful sigil uh, on the cover which is gold embossed um which looks you know quite cool i haven't actually figured out what this sigil is if anyone wants to write in the comments here if they've figured that out i've had a look at the rose cross template and i've had a look at a few other things which i tried to uh, decipher it but perhaps this is something that damien has done for himself that um has sort of marked the book let's go on the inside and i'll tell you what's in the uh index um, as I said, this is a really great book. It's, you know, it's all black and white in the, um, there's no color plates in here. It's all just black and white. All the illustrations are done by Damien. So all the sigils that are drawn uh, within the book, he's created himself. Um, you know, there's an introduction to magic, why learn magic, what magic is and isn't, why spell books don't work. I think anyone who has bought a spell book in the past and gone, well, this is rubbish, it doesn't work. <laughs> this will tell you why. Because basically, as I said, we're working with energy, intention, visualization and immersion. All right. Um, anything to do with the, with energy work or spirit work, you know, again, more labels, more paradigms. Um, it's essentially the same thing. Training your mind, the magic of visualization. Raising and directing energy, uh, fundamentals, practicing variations of the breath, solar applications, lunar applications, seasonal applications, 
um, a couple of um, you know core trainings in here as well or core ritual work that if you've never done magic before these are outlined in here very very simply um, and, and beautifully written as well which is you know sometimes people get afraid of the original um, the Golden Dawn, you know, the, the book by Israel Regardi, who um, translated and took those scriptures from Alistair Crowley and then just made them available to the masses, which, you know, originally the Hermetic Order was very much, um, you know, uh, elitist on many levels. And it doesn't matter what community you want to participate in, there are always going to be, you know, the elitist kind of... Um, you know, turning their nose up at certain things. But look, this is a very honest book and it's a very genuinely written book. And it's also a book that's been written from the heart and written based on facts, experience, um, which is also amazing. Evidence. I mean, who doesn't want evidence when they're working on something? If you want to apply yourself to something, you want to see results. This will give you results. So again, um, history of magic we're talking about the middle pillar the kabbalistic cross the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram the less invoking ritual of the pentagram and when we're talking about banishing or invoking we're obviously invoking it which means we're drawing down energy and banishing means we're pushing it away or moving it away from us we're banishing negativity toxicity um, and cleaning our space you know because our space builds up with um you know as he's described in here gunk um, you know, and energy as well is is also very much, you know, it's it's about, I, I keep, I don't know why I keep describing it like this, but it's kind of like fleas on a dog. You know, if you, you are the company you keep, if you hang out with certain people that are always going to stay in a low vibration and they do the same thing day in, day out, and nothing ever changes and you're wanting change out of your life, you're wanting to, to improve, you're wanting to transcend, you're wanting to, you know, leave this kind of mundane existence because there is more out there. Okay, stuff exists on a level that we cannot see on the day to day, but if we tap into certain energies and certain practice, um, they start becoming very, very real and very, very quickly. Um, the results that I've experienced from this kind of work um, can be almost instantaneous. But look, it is a life work. They call it the great work. Um, and it is combined in here as well with um, obviously um, Kabbalistic um, traditions, Jewish mysticism. We're talking about the tree of life. We're talking about transcendence, going through um, the different sephira to work towards um, Ketha, which is the crown, which is the white light of ultimate spirit. OK, so if I'm talking really quickly here as well, guys, I'm, you know, just a Gemini, you know, that's what I do. So bear with me here. Um, but yeah, there's beautiful examples in here. Middle pillar, how to perform that. Kabbalistic cross, how to perform that. Lesser banishing ritual, banishing again, removing energy, exerting energy away from you. Um, invoking, drawing down energy, drawing down energy from spirit. Bare bones invocations, um, charging, charging water. Um, even just a simple glass of water, he can t show you how to charge um, water and then drink it. So there's some really simple stuff in here that can be done just, you know, using no special equipment. You know, you don't have to have special crystals or uh, special altars or, you know, this is not what this is about. This person did all of this for 20 years in a cell with no, you know, he couldn't go down to the local magic shop and pick up a pentagram or, you know, all the, the paraphernalia that goes along with it. Um, you know, the tools are a prop. And it's the same with the tarot as well. You know, tarot cards can indicate certain things as well. But, um, you know, they, they really are just a prop. The energy comes from you. Your ability comes from your mind, from your heart, from your aura. Okay. Meal blessings. Uh Urban shamanism, know thyself, which is something I say on a regular basis. Know yourself, know who you are. Spend time with yourself. He spent 20 years by himself. So he pretty much knows who he is and where he's going. Um, and he got himself out of prison. You know, who gets themselves off death row? He said he watched over 20 people on the level that he um, his cell was in for 20 years, just walk down that aisle. And he knew they were never coming back because they were getting a lethal injection. And he escaped that. It's really mind-blowing. So getting back to the book, um, as I said, there's all of these things in here about uh, a preface with his story, introduction to magic, why learn magic. Uh, I'll just read you a couple of sentences. 
First of all, if you're already doing magic, you're already doing magic. With every thought, word, deed, you are influencing the world around you and determining what comes your way. Even when I was in solitary confinement waiting to be executed, I could still shape my reality to a large degree. Granted, most people do this unconsciously. They make things happen in their lives without giving it a second thought. The only difference between a magician and the average person on the street is that a magician does magic intentionally. So this is a book about intention, not just about wishing, wanting, aimlessly kind of hoping. That's not what this book is about. This is about applied practice to invoke or banish or, you know, um, manifest what you want. Okay. There's been many books written about this, you know, the secret, the, you know, the, the law of attraction, um, all of that. This is what it is. This is what it's based on. This is the oldest testament ever. You know, the, the books, the, the knowledge that comes from this sort of, you know, mini summary, because let's face it, this is very small. But this is like a very compact version. This is kind of like the the microwave version of the some of the books I've got, which are, you know, we're talking, you know, telephone book thick um, and the language that's used is, is very sort of archaic but this is very very digestible this is very user friendly um, yeah so he's talking about why learn magic once you begin experimenting with magic you'll never see life the same way again and you you won't um, it's it's really fun and really powerful you know what magic is and what magic isn't uh, let's start with this book why is it spelled magic with a k and what's so high about it well, uh, magic is spelt with a K to differentiate from parlor tricks and illusions. So the K has also been linked as well. He doesn't say this, but the K has also been linked to Kabbalah with a K. Um, and it's it's not magic as in pull a rabbit out of your hat magic. It's not a sleight of hand um, magician, you know, Cosentino or David Copperfield or whatever. That's not what this magic is about. They call it magic with a K for a reason. Um it's a specific spiritual tradition, an amalgamation of Gnostic Christianity, esoteric Juda Judaism, Taoist energy practices, and often forms of divination such as the tarot or I Ching. Um, it's a path to transformation. Okay, so again, um, you know, he speaks about the tarot as well, especially more in angels, uh, angels and archangels, um, which I'll get to. But um, preliminaries. Uh, we're raising energy and directing energy. Um, he talks about five basic meditations, a standing meditation, walking meditation, listening meditation, looking meditation, eating meditation. And these are basic things. Like even the, the eating meditation is just like, well, instead of just sitting down and just shoveling your food in, just stop, enjoy. When you put that mouthful of food in your in your mouth, chew it. You can taste it, you can smell it, you can really savour it. You know, that's a form of meditation. That's appreciating the now. And a lot of people don't do that. They just sort of shovel things in and keep going about their day. And it's all very mindless. It's all very, they're not conscious. So that's what this is about. This is about focusing your energy and fo focusing your, your concentration on being conscious, being self-aware, understanding what's around you, what's behind you, what's in front of you. What are you putting into your body? What are the sounds that you hear? What are the conversations that you're listening to? What are you actually watching? All of these things make up our energy and they make up our space and they make up how, who we are. So the magic of visualization practice, again, this is sort of, um, you know, a manifestation. So it's about having the desire, making the decision and then visualizing the end result before it's even happened. Again, I've put that on my YouTube and my Instagram if you want to sort of read my version of it. Um, but it's the same thing, you know, Anthony Robbins, um, you know, big sort of influences, Oprah Winfrey, as I said, the, the, the woman who wrote The Secret. Um, you know, there's been millions of books written about this. But this is a sense of ritual, okay? This is a sense of, um, you know, from an occult perspective, you know, because a lot of people, w you know, wouldn't look at this sort of thing because they think, oh, it's evil, oh, it's angels and demons, oh, you know, it's just get over it. That's not what it's about. It's not about religion. It's about a science. So I'm going to keep moving. Um, raising and directing energy, work without doubt. Um, again, you know, working with 
working with doubt is, is something here. Doubts are just part of a process of learning magic. You might be standing in the room doing the lesser banishing ritual with the pentagram. You might be thinking, oh, I, I sound and look like a mad person here. But you will feel the change. You will feel a shift. You will know that it's different. And I love the analogy that he uses throughout this book and the other book as well, which is the same as anything. If you're sort of just going to give something a, a half-assed attempt and then never do it again, you're never going to see results. It's about consistency. It's like going to the gym. You know, if you just go to the gym and go on the treadmill for 20 minutes once a month, you're probably not going to see results. If you consistently apply yourself three times a week or every day, you do five or 10 minutes of an exercise, that's, that's, that's the outcome you'll get. You'll see results and you'll start, you know, um, invoking and banishing and, and seeing change in your life and working with um, a new sort of way of living here that, um, as I said, you will see changes you can't even imagine. Um, yeah, I'm not going to share some of my personal experiences because I feel some of them are, um, I was blown away. I couldn't believe um, some of the things that were happening to me because of this work. So I, all I can say is I highly recommend it. Check it out and look into it. Don't doubt yourself. Just keep going. Fundamental practices of magic, working with various um, variations of the fourfold breath. So this is about working with um, exhal exhalation, inhalation for counts of four. Okay. And this also then starts changing your metabolism, changing, um, you know, your energy flow, your chi, your meridians, your ability to re receive energy and expel energy. It's a, it's a give and take. Okay. Um, amazing. Amazing. I just love this book. It's so good. I read it like in two days it didn't it didn't even take that long it was just like one, one page after another and as i said it's very simple to read if you even if you're not a big reader history of magic um goes into talking about um you know creating a link between an object and a desired outcome so you know this is sort of even goes back to voodoo and all this kind of crazy um but you can see um things in here that he's written about when we're talking about um putting your intention into an object um, describing the difference as well between talismans and, um, and, uh, what am I saying? Talismans and amulets. So an amulet is obviously used for protection and a talisman is something that you, um, move towards. Okay. So A for, you know, A for, um, amulet is about attraction and moving towards something is sort of a talisman um, energy. Like for example, I'll be using my large tarot cards over here as talismans because I'm looking to, um, you know, direct my energy into a certain card regarding a certain zodiac. When I work with clients or I work with people who want to invoke certain energies as well, I will also use tarot cards for that purpose. And he goes into that in the Archangels book as well. Um, prehistoric paint, uh, prehistoric people painted scenes on the walls of caves in order to make those links and hopefully fend off starvation during long cold winters. So, you know, artwork, um, again, you know, sigil artwork, cave paintings, all those sorts of things were used in terms of, um, protection and spiritual practice. Um, you know, we're talking about even with our indigenous culture here in Australia, you know, cave paintings were all about dream time. Dreamtime um, was, you know, working with spirit and what was happening within the land before the English arrived and created chaos. Um, but, you know, artwork is also integral to interpreting imagery, um, which is also, he goes into great detail in this book as well. The middle pillar um, is, again, it's another, um, you know, ritual that, you know, you're, you're sort of channeling light through the center of your core being coming through uh, from the divine universe, coming through your center, going right to the bottom of your feet, anchoring in you to the earth and sort of dispersing the white light beneath you. Therefore, you can then raise it back up again and push it out into the universe. It's like it, it is quite um, spiritual on a number of levels because this is sort of what magic work is. It's just you're working with energy and people sort of connect energy with what we call spirit world um, however this is um, sort of the what you're going to experience when you read this book and you look at the instructions here and all of these performance instructions you know performing the middle pillar step one step two step three step four it's all written 
step by step, which is amazing. Um, so if anyone's ever been, you know, sort of cautious of, of how it all works, I mean, it doesn't get any more simple than this. I mean, it's super simple, very easy to understand. Um, and it's almost like a form of, it's high magic for beginners, basically. Um, and vibrating certain names. I mean, we are talking here as well, um, vibrating certain uh, Hebrew gods or Hebrew energies. Um, we're talking about um, touching your forehead, touching your chest, touching your right shoulder, left shoulder, and then folding both hands over your chest for the Kabbalistic cross meditation. There's a diagram here as well to sort of show you what you might be experiencing when you um, apply yourself to these sorts of things. And then there's a there's a image here of the Tree of Life. If you're interested in what this all means as well, there's 32 pathways on here. All of these pathways here are um, in line with the, um, the tarot as well. And these 10 sephira here are almost like, you know, worlds that we go through. This is Malkuth, so this is obviously on an earth level. And then where we want to get to here is um, is Ketha, which is the crown. This is the white light. This book's in black and white, but traditionally these are in certain colours. Um, and he does also go into colour vibration as well into the other book. But if you're interested in learning about the Tree of Life, this is just basically working through different... Um, you know, areas of our life and manifesting certain stages um, on our pathway here because it's about correction. When we look at, um, if you look at Kabbalah as a school, not necessarily magic or, or what have you as a religious sort of aspect, it's not, it's not ever really classified as religion. It's always classified as science. Um, you know, magicians were, or mages were always considered to be, you know, masters of numerology and astrology and mathematics and science and alchemy. That's what magic is. It's working with earth elements um, and generating um, things that we don't, we can't normally perceive on a conscious level. Okay. It's like tapping into beyond the veil, if you want to call it beyond the veil. Okay. Um, but that's essentially what it is. Uh, super interesting. I love it. Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram. Again, he goes through here the, the process of that. This is really great too because when we're talking about um, getting into the more at the angel invocation side of it, there's a breakdown here as well. And I'll sort of explain when we're doing a banishing ritual or an invoking ritual, we're basically looking at four, you know, a, a, a cross, like a compass, you know, north, south, east and west. You do one ritual this side, then you turn... Um, you know, turn behind you, turn to your the east, and then the um, then the west, and the north, and the south. And each of those directions are governed um, by certain entities, and those entities have names. And some of them they're considered angels. And the angels are Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, and Uriel. And each of these angels govern an element: earth, fire, water, and air. Okay. Um, and then the fifth element, which is the pentagram on the fifth, the fifth. The, the pointed star that's at the top of the star here that indicates spirit or Kether, you know what I mean? So Raphael is um, the element of air. He he's or referenced as um, the season of spring. He's indicated as the suit of swords in the tarot. And then we have Gabriel, um, which is about the psyche, intuition, unconscious dreams, emotions, which is the direction of west. Element of air, season of autumn and tarot suit of the cups and then we're talking about michael which is best known for his pivotal role in catholicism um, he's the direction of south he's the element of fire and he's the season of summer and he is the tarot suit of the wands and then we have uriel which is the physical realm and associated with earth so it's the direction of north the element of earth the season winter and the tarot suit pentacles so this as well is when you're invoking certain angels, even if you want to do north, south, east and west, if you just wanted to focus on money, for example, or your health, your health and wealth, well, you might just invoke Uriel um, north, south, east and west to create, um, you know, a vortex or a sphere of energy that you can actually invoke whatever it is that you want in your life in those areas of your life, whether it be better health, improve your business, you know, get that pay rise, whatever it is, you know, these are the elements and that we're working with here and it folds over into the tarot as well. That's sort of the, the super quick version of it. Um, 
so again, you know, and then there's a there's an instruction here as well. So the direction of when you draw the pentagram with your um, they call the the sword mudra. Okay, you've got two fold fingers over here and your thumb on here like this. And this is the what you're using here to draw it in the air. Okay, when you're doing the ritual in front of you. Um, the mudra as well, the sword mudra is just a, an indication of your fingers, you know, and you usually use your right hand for that. Um, your left hand is also seen as um, receiving and your right hand is projecting as well. So you might want to just bear that in mind when you're doing the rituals. Extend your two first fingers, the other two fingers, your palms, close your hand. Mudra is a hand gesture to symbolize or trigger certain states of consciousness. And the sword mudra is especially effective at projecting energy in order to invoke blessings or empower pentagrams, for example. It's called a sword mudra because it's meant to cut away our ignorance regarding the true nature of reality and replace that lack of knowing with wisdom. Pretty cool stuff, hey? Um... So, yeah, so look, this is a fantastic book. Um, lesser banishing of the ritual of the pentagram. Uh, additional practices are in the back. He's got the invoking, which is drawing down the energy. So that's sort of showing you the invoking uh, energy. Uh, circumambulating the temple. This is sort of walking around um, the inner of the circle. It's a, like a walking around the sun kind of thing. I'll let you guys read ab about that. Um, what else has he got here? Just going into um, bare bones invocation. So if you just want to do the stripped down version of it, like I said before, you can go before me, Michael, behind me, Michael, on my right hand, Michael, on my left hand, Michael, above me, Michael, and below me. Oh, that's the other thing. So you can ha you can just do the standard um, four directions when you're doing a, an, an invocation. Or if you then, you know, you get really confident with it and you've practiced it, uh, you know, a number of times to the point where you've memorized it. You don't have to use the book or little flashcards or notes to remember. What you want to do is also completely encapsulate yourself with the temple of energy that you've created by having uh, an angel above you and below you. So it's not just in a circle around you. It's as above, so below. Um, and he uses two additional uh, angels for that as well, such as um, Metatron and Sandlophon. And they're, they're explained in the Archangels book. Creating thought forms. Uh, we never use our own energy when we generate a thought form. We draw from energy from above. We never use our own energy. We take it from the universe and then we expel it out through our consciousness. Okay. Creating a thought form. Um, you can use the following technique for just about anything. Protection, prosperity, relationship, healing, business success, or whatever else you wish to manifest in the physical realm. Um, it, again, it's more ritual work, but it's, you know, and most of these rituals, once you get through the basics of them, they can take maybe five minutes out of your day. You know, once you know what you're doing, it doesn't take a long time, but it's just something that, you know, like eating your breakfast or having your morning coffee, get this done, clear the space, you're ready to start your day, okay? At the end of the day, they also recommend you do a banishing, Okay, so you can invoke in the morning and banish at the end of the day. So you're you're invoking the start of your day with magic, and you're closing the day with with cleaning that cleaning the house down, um, metaphorically. Um, that's what sort of neophytes. If you're a neophyte as part of the um, hermetic order, a neophyte is a you know a new um, a person who's who's a beginner in magic. Let's just call it that. Um, so if you're a neophyte, you would, you'd be asked to do that um, at the beginning of every day and at the end of every day. That's just the basic top and tail um, as a starting level. Okay, and then whatever you want to do in between that or build on top of in between that, that's completely up to you. He goes into great detail with the Angels um, book as well in terms of really, I'll talk to you about it when I read that book as well. I'll just talk to you about that book. Um, water. Crystals, uh, he's talking about crystals and also tattoos um, in terms of putting uh, talismans, amulets and tattoos. We're talking about, you know, protection, using certain tattoos for protection, using tattoos for um, invocation as well. He's got a lot of tattoos, as you can see from the, the book cover. Um, but again, you know, um, it's a fantastic book. I really, if you're, if you're new to magic and you, you really sort of want to 
find out what this is all about, this is the book to get, okay? Because there's heaps of them and I've got a lot of them, but this is sort of, as I said, a really simple um, breakdown of, of high magic um, for beginners. There's the dust cover. Again, I'm not really a fan of the dust cover. I actually prefer it just like this. Um, and also when I'm using a book light as well, you can, you know, book lights tend to work better on a hard cover, especially at night time if you're reading like this. But So that's High Magic. Um, highly recommend. You can get it on Amazon. Just Google it. I'll leave a link below as well if you're not sure we think is the best place to buy it but um i got it on amazon and it came through really quickly i bought them together as well which is what i'd recommend if you're really interested in, in getting into this so the second book um that i'm going to talk about is is archangels and archangels um and this is cover this image on the cover here is um it's basically from sumeria this is like an old um version of um what they call what's the name of it again um oh, i can't remember the name of it i hate doing videos things just leave my brain anyway this is a really awesome book as well because then we talk more about the tarot in this okay so the tarot in this is definitely um a talking point i'm going to take the dust cover off as well to show you this because this is sort of uh, this is also a hard cover it's got red inside but this has got like an em embossing of the um of the tree of life on the cover as well which is quite cool um you know so archangels angels and archangels um he talks a little bit about high magic so there is a little bit of a little bit of an overlap with some of the content in here but um, we're talking about jumping straight into angels and archangels, working with magic um, in terms of the, pra the practice of the elements, air magic, fire magic, water magic, magic earth magic. And then he really goes into some detail here around um, advanced rituals, you know, the rose cross, uh, introduction to hexagrams, uh, lesser banishing ritual of the hexagram, which is the, an advanced version of the pentagrams. The Celestial Lotus, which is insane, like it's just basically, uh, it's like 144 angels, I think, all together. And it takes him about four hours to actually go through all of the names and all of the invocations. Um, and then the last one is the Shem Operation. The Shem Operation is a simple way of um, explaining a an extremely complex um, Jewish form of invocation. Um, it basically involves a combination of um, what they call angels and demons, but it's um, shafts of energy that we can invoke in terms of naming angels themselves and actually getting magic out of that on a daily basis for different things. You know, it's explained in this book as well that angels are an energy form that we can call upon and they're there. They're basically, they come to you to show up for work and then you've got to give them a job to do. Basically, that's it. So they're, they're here to serve, they're here to help us, and they're here to show us um, what we want out of life. And again, the word angel and demon is just a paradigm, okay? So we're invoking certain energies to take us to where we want to go or to um, see results in a certain area of our life. But this is also about, um, you know, I find balance. Not only are we going to obviously request things from a material perspective, but also we are wanting to, um, you know, propel ourselves spiritually, grow as a person, correct certain things along our life journey, our karmic path. Um, it, you know, and what they do is what they consider it at the end of the day is what he calls and the Jewish you know, community will call the great work. You know, once you continue to do this and do this over and over, you can complete this within a lifetime. Then you don't have to return uh, you know, be reunited or reincarnated and come back and on the karmic wheel again, which I've had, you know, people ask me about in the past and it's kind of like, well, in order to clear your energy so you're actually basically a pure form of energy is what the intention of this book is all about as well, working with angels. Now, just quickly going through, sorry, I know this is a bit of a long video, but it's just lots to talk about. Um, introduction, what is angel magic? Part one, angels and archangels. So he talks about angels of the elements, as I said in the previous book, Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, Uriel. 
Metatron and Sandlophon. So he does talk about the six um, main ones that he works with here. Um, and then we're talking about Archangels of the Tree of Life. So we're talking about Sandlophon is Malkuth, Gabriel is Yesod, Michael is Hod, Haniel is Nitzak, Raphael is Tifereth, Kamal, Kamael is um, Geburah, etc., etc. Angels and Archangels of the Zodiac. So there's 12 Angels of the Zodiac and there's 72 Angels of the Zodiac. So he goes into detail about those. Angels of the Tarot. Archangels of the Major Arcana, the cards, their associated Archangels, reasons for charging and invocation, the Angels and Archangels of Mana Arcana, their cards, their associated Angels and Archangels, and reasons for charging and invocation. Practices and Rituals, Attitude and Manifestation, Quantum Physics and Magic, Experimentation, Magical Tools and Implements, Your Altar, Mind Training, Mindfulness, Essential Rituals, Calling on Angels, Advanced Rituals, Next Steps, Notes, Index, uh, index and Resources. Okay. The illustrations, the sigil of um, Raphael, Gabriel, Michael, Uriel, Metatron, Sandalphon, Kabbalistic Tree of Life, um, etc. Forwarded by, uh, forward by John Michael Greer, who if you haven't discovered John Michael Greer's work, Google it. Um, he's amazing. Um, he talks about Damien here in the intro, which is really quite flattering. Um, acknowledgements. He's talking about the producers and the publishers and everything. What is angel magic? Um, how I invoked angels to create my previous book. Just another religion. People who say they don't believe in magic are simply saying they haven't practiced magic. Magic doesn't form function on belief. It's not a religion. It's a system of practices that work whether or not you believe in them or not. Paraphrasing a friend of mine, this is exactly why we don't teach more advanced techniques to novices. Where they work no matter if you're a psychopath or a saint. When you start practicing magic, it's natural to wonder if it's working or you're just playing mind games with yourself. I know I did. Everything I read just sounded too good to be true. I mean, if it were really that possible to send angels out into the world to fulfill your requests, wouldn't everybody be, everybody be doing it? Before I passed through the initial stages of practice and began to awaken my energy centers, it just sort of felt like I was going through the motions of invoking angels. But then I experienced something within my cell, an angel, in fact. And I finally knew that magic was real and that it had worked. All it took was to get to that point of sustained willpower and determination and not an ounce of belief was necessary for the process. So it is all about applying yourself. Um, the possessed... Um, this is really interesting because he also talks about will and ego uh, in the book as well. The will, we all have will. Um, in magic, we use the word will just in the same way Hindus use Dharma. It means, among other things, the specific path we're here to walk. Each person's will is unique to them and custom by making them higher self to maximize their potential for awakening. Uh, situations that bring enlightenment for one person will have no effect on others, simply due to the particular makeup of their will. Unfortunately, most people have no idea what their will is, which makes it easy to get tripped up by the ego and becomes increasingly trapped in unnecessary drama and psychic impurities. So we need to release ourselves from ego. We need to release ourselves what's happening. You know, it's almost like simplifying it by saying, don't pay attention to what other people are doing. Focus on what you're doing, because if you focus on what you're doing, you're going to get a lot more done. Okay, that's me. That's my personal mantra. That's how I've always lived. I don't really care what other people are doing. I'm not really interested in Joe Blow down the road and da da da. I'm interested in my path, the people who are close to me, and how I can affect those in my you know current environment. What matters to me, whether or not that be assisting others, helping others, uh, raising their vibration, getting them to where they need to go. That's part of my will, and therefore. I am repaid by the universe in other magical ways. And, you know, that's that's sending it out to, to, to have it boomerang back to you. It's just pretty basic, actually. The ego. We practice magic. What we're essentially doing is rising on the planes of existence towards a, a level already embodied by angels and archangels. That's not our experience on the lower end of the spectrum, represented by our existence on Earth, where we're typically identified and extremely limited. The small self, the ego. The ego is our primary obstacle to discovering our will. 
fulfilling it and awakening to our true nature. Um, crossing the abyss, the world isn't anything like what most people think it is. I made a comment on his YouTube channel once saying, I crossed the abyss once because I was on LSD. <laughs> That's a story for another time. The difference between angels and archangels. Before we get into the lists of angels and archangels, it will be helpful to know how the two are different. Here's a basic rundown. Angels are almost pure energy, whereas archangels are the powerful, intelligent forces that direct that energy. They're kind of like the gatekeepers. For example, when we talk about raw pl planetary energy of Jupiter, we're talking about angels. When we talk about the consciousness or intelligence gov governing that energy, we're talking about archangels. Angels are everywhere. They're the very substance of which the cosmos is made. Arch archangels are essentially stars, but just a couple of steps down from gods. They exist on a level of creation immediately above ours, which makes them relatively easy to contact. They're also incredibly willing to work with us if asked. So there is a hierarchy. Okay, so our, our beautiful archangels, our pillars are there. Our Gabriel, our Michael, our Uriel, our Raphael, our Metatron, our Sandalphon. But then drilling down into that, we've also got all the worker bees. If you think about it like that, you know, the archangels are kind of like the queen bees. And then the angels are the worker bees inside of that energy. Um, okay, so angels and archangels, spellings, genders, physical descriptions, um, angels of the elements. Um, he goes through each element here with a sigil. So he goes through, this is a sigil for um, Raphael. Visualizing Raphael, reasons to invoke Raphael. For example, Raphael is obviously for fire. Radiant yellow robes, if you want to wear robes. Uh, articulate your ideas to others, safe passage. Oh, sorry, I beg your pardon. Raphael was um, air. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, is air, so he's all about yellow. I'm an air sign. Um, I have a I have a yellow car, okay? I, I had the money to buy a new car a few years ago and I could have got black. A lot of people were quite surprised why I bought a yellow car. I'm like, why are you driving a yellow car? It's quite sporty, but it's because I'm an air sign. It's the color of the sun. It keeps me protected on the road. There are many reasons why people choose color and that was the reason why I chose yellow. I'm not interested in following fashion or this or that. That's not why we're living here to exist. So Raphael is, is one of my angels because I'm an air sign. Okay. And air is associated with protection, the sun, um, intellect. Um, that's why we have yellow behind certain colors on the tarot. You know, this is a magician. He's got yellow in the background. This is invoking Raphael. Okay. Um, so that's why sort of how you sort of join the dots on a number of levels. Gabriel, which is water, so blue robes to overcome anger, anger or melancholy, heal any form of emotional wounding, or healing anything related to love. Michael, red robes, so this is fire, to lose weight, to get into shape, for protection, to enhance passion, all of that fire energy, that's Michael. Uriel is earth. So we're talking green robes, assisting with divination, anything involving finances to obtain material goods and wealth. This is Earth Angel, Michael. Oh, sorry, Uriel. Metatron is kind of like Kether. This is, he's like right up the top there, but he was considered once human and then made into an angel. And the same with Sandalphon on the Earth here. Okay, this is sort of to improve certain things about um, your manifestation and financial and there's a list of things here. But Sandalphon was also considered a, was a human before he was turned into an, an angel. Then he goes into angels of the tree of life, um, working through the tree of life again and the angels that are associated with that. Um, I won't go through every single one of those because otherwise we'll be here forever. Angels and archangels of the zodiac. This is something that I personally love. Um, so uh, Malkadiel is Archangel of Aries. Asmodel is Archangel of Taurus. Archangel of Gemini is Ambriel. Muriel is Cancer. Virchiel is Leo. 
Hamael is Virgo, Zuriel is Libra, Bachel is Scorpio, Anachiel is Sagittarius, Hanael is Capricorn, Cambriel is Aquarius, Amnitzel is Pisces. There we have it. Um, the 72 Angels of the Zodiac. Now, this is another complex um, system, but there's another book as well which you might be interested in, and it's a, it's 72 Angels of all well, the Powers of Magic, seven, invoking 72 Angels. And this is when, at the, towards the end of this book here, he sort of leads out with um, talking about the Shem operation, um, and that's actually working with individual angels um, for 11 days straight. And you're invoking certain angels to get certain results because different angels have different qualifications. Okay, they all have a certain power or a certain um, something they can help you out with. So he's also broken it down here into angels of Aries. Um, so there's, you know, how many has he got here? Six angels for Aries. Six angels for Taurus. So six times 12 is 72. So there's six angels per zodiac. Um, and they're all listed here. Okay, they're all listed here. So if you want to just work on one particular ritual with one particular angel to help you out in a certain area of your life, that's what you're going to refer to. So he goes through all 72 listed here. And then we start talking about angels of the tarot. So um, archangels of the major arcana. Again, talking about Raphael here with the full energy. Raphael here with yellow, the magician. I showed you that card before. And there's an angel for every single major arcana in here. Okay, so you're going to understand that and connect with that as well when we're talking about the elements. Okay, and it's because obviously the 22 major arcana, 12 of them are zodiac and 12 of, and 10 of them are planetary. So you just have to sort of read through and wrap your head around those as well. But if you also want to learn more about tarot as well, don't forget I've got my new angel tarot academy. You can check that out on my website, newangeltarotacademy.com. Cambriel, Zamael, Michael, the sun, because it's ruled by fire, and the sun is a source of fire. Um, Cassiel. And then we talk um, the night and the day angels as well um, for each single um, major uh, minor arcana. But when we're talking about wands, uh, sorry, when we're talking about the aces, very much like in tarot anyway, they, they're not... They don't pertain to a certain zodiac. They just revolve around um, the, the group of zodiacs that we're talking about. So with the wands here, we'd just be talking about Leo, Sagittarian and Aries. But when we're talking about angel energy, the wands always just indicate Michael. The cups will be Gabriel. The pentacles will be Uriel. Um, and Raphael will be the swords because it's air. Okay. So there are multiple angels for each of the minor arcana. But then when we get, for example, to the, so we've got the aces encompass all. And then when we get to the court cards, they're also encompassing all. So we've got like Archangel, Gabriel, 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 Gabriel for the, for the page, the knight, the queen and the king for each respective suit. If that makes sense. Um, all right. So I'm going to take you all through that, which is really awesome. And I just love the way he's just broken it all down. It makes it really simple like for angel work specifically because you know the the tarot is extremely layered on num on so many levels um but it is all integrated when we're talking about kabbalah and the tree of life and how the suits um you know invoke certain <laughs> we can invoke certain energies um using the cards as well part two so yeah so part one is basically the overview of the angels and the sigils that pertain to those things and talking about will and ego and then we've got part two here, which is the last half of the book, which is actually practices and rituals. Um, it's really amazing in terms of um, the rituals that he's put in here. Some of them are from High Magic already. So we're talking about ta magical tools and implements, charging a talisman, um, your altar, if you want an altar, mind training, mindfulness and meditation. Prison cell meditation, um, noticing the strategies of the ego, anxiety, faith, and fear. Okay, these are three things that I deal with constantly with my clients. Um, they're afraid, they're anxious, um, 
you know, and they fear the future. They fear what's in front of them. And if you fear what's in front of you, you're not going to be able to move forward, you know, because this is all about propelling yourself into what you want, throwing yourself into um, an unconscious sort of movement, because what you do then is you, you spark an energy, you create dynamic, you create change in your life. But if you're going to stand there, oh, I don't know, I'm too scared, oh, I don't, screw that, throw it out the window, go for it. That's what the full card is. The full card in the tarot is about taking that leap of faith, okay? Working with Raphael, working with air energy. Um, you know, we've got the full card here, okay? So again, yellow, okay? Intellect, working with, working with the sun, okay? Working with the power of, um, you know, looking up. Not looking down, looking up, infinite potential, because we all have infinite potential, okay? So you can always circle back to that sort of thing as well. Um, so anxiety, faith, and fear, through my own practice, I've come to believe that the greatest detriment to our development is the downward spiral of fear, which we habitually throw ourselves. Modern science is now beginning to discover and describe the connections between our thought processes and the physical world. Simply put, our thoughts can either improve or harm physical forms. Anxious or fear-based thoughts are associated with chemicals in our bloodstream that lead to anything from weight gain to high blood pressure and even illnesses such as shingles. Thoughts of happiness, love and on the other hand are associated with chemicals that promote feelings of well-being, increased immune function and so on. I know this firsthand from my experience on death row, especially during the final week when I was overwhelmed by stress and fear suffered terrible nausea and canker sores. This is why some of the form of mind training or meditation is so important to the magician. It helps us surface those thoughts that are detrimental, become aware of our habitual cognitive patterns and establishing ways of thinking that actually promote what we want out of life. Don't get me wrong, the macho stereotypical American male, no fear approach to life is the furthest thing from what I'm talking about mainly because it doesn't work, and in fact it tends to backfire. We simply can't just banish our fear by forceful means. When we try to white-knuckle it and battle fear head-on, all we're doing is placing more attention on it and helping it grow in strength. It's like feeding the beast, yeah? Um, when we try, when we're simply feeding it with more energy, therefore assisting it by consuming even more of our thoughts. Okay, so we're feeding something that we're lusting after. We're wanting it so bad. Did it? It's about trusting in the universe. It's about sort of putting it out there, writing down your message, putting it out there, turning your back and getting on with your day, allowing the energy to manifest itself. That's when people also come to tarot readings and they say, oh, I need to touch base with you again. I'll catch up with you in two weeks. I'm saying, no, 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 please don't do that. Give it at least two months, you know, six to eight weeks even. Because the messages and the energy that comes through, it's kinetic energy. And when we're working with tarot and we're doing a, you know, a, a reading, you have to allow that person then to go out into the world and continue on with their day and let the magic unfold because that's the art of manifestation. Um, I'll give you another, you know, sort of, I guess, a, a mundane example that I always use and it, it tends to resonate with people. It's like if you chase money, the more you chase money, Money's like a puppy. The more you chase it, the more it'll run away from you. But if you just go about your day knowing that's what you want and you're focusing on the things, the practical things that you need to do to get it done, the money will follow. It's like follow your passions. You know, if you do what you love, the money will follow. That's kind of the, the idea. Um, practice. <laughs> this is interesting as well. He's got here practice. Look up. Okay, look up. What is the fool doing? Looking up. Okay, that's what he's talking about here. No one has ever lived a positive, happy, fulfilled life while at the same time staring down into the muck and wallowing in their negative thoughts. This is one reason why the cathedrals of old were built with high arching ceilings. It invited people to look upward and assume that the posture tends to have a positive effect on your thinking. Try it out for yourself. The next time you catch yourself feeling depressed or simply bummed out, pay attention to your posture. And as it turns out, the saying, keep your chin up, 
just isn't an empty suggestion. Aligning your spine and lifting your gaze is often the first step to steering your thoughts in a preferable direction. Look up. Okay? Have faith. Uh, spiritual bypassing. It's kind of like, oh, if we're going to ignore it long enough or remove ourselves from negativity, it'll just go away. That's what spiritual bypassing is. Um, when people begin to believe that some emotional states are inherently more spiritual than others, which causes them to suppress their existence of fear by just or just pretend it isn't there in the first place. Taking care of your environment. Our immediate surroundings influence our thoughts and moods, both directly and indirectly. I like to collect beautiful objects, magical implements and paintings. Mostly I've found that they enrich the way I feel. Filling your home up with um, sensual objects will tend to lift your spirits and increase your vibrational rate. I like to collect nice things. I like to have plants. I like to have my crystals out. I like to create an environment for myself where I'm going to be doing my best work, where I feel uplifted, where I feel positive. And that's what he's talking about in here. You know, keeping, the, keeping your areas clean, you know, dust free. You know, that saying, cleanliness is next to godliness. Or well, the cleaner we keep our space, the more energy, the clearer the energy is going to be. Okay. If we live in a place that's just disheveled, no clean spaces. It's just a mess. Well, that's how our life is going to be, a mess. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Anyway, um... Calling on angels, calling on angels through here. Um, sigil practice, lesser banishing. He goes through that with the hexagram, which is a little bit more advanced than the uh, the basic one. But then we've got here ritual, the celestial lotus, and uh, this was the this was the one that actually blew my mind. So instead of just doing the four north, south, east, and west, he's also doing. Um, Raphael in the you know in the east and the south to inv to inv invoke Gabriel and Yesod and between Michael in the south Gabriel in the west invoke Haniel of Netzach so it's kind of not just um, north south east and west oh there goes my tarot cards he's also talking about I'm not going to show you this book but this is essentially what it is so we've got north south east and west but then when we're doing the hexagram He's doing it this way as well. So he's invoking angels, northeast, southeast, east, west, etc. Okay, that's what this is, chaos magic. Um, hang on, I've just got to pick up my things. All right. Um, so that is like amazing, amazing, amazing. And as I said, you've just got to go through and um, read it all. And then the last one here is the Shem operation. Okay, so this is this is something that I'm working through at the moment myself. And this is the Shem operation is this. Okay, so we're talking about um, 72 angels around the outside here. But we're also talking about... Um, you know, decans, we're talking first and second, third decans in here, okay, and when we learn tarot as well, this is when we can start talking about, um, you know, decans within the minor arcana, and then you just sort of go deeper and deeper and deeper into the center, when we're, then we're talking about, um, you know, ba the basic numerology within the zodiac, uh, then we're also talking about the, the Hebrew connections and the names attached to these energies, because all of these energies, like each, each sort of stream, that we're looking at here is one angel that comes straight through here okay um yeah so it's it's very complex but at the same time it's also quite simple um it's a system just like anything else you know it's a science there is method to it um, and once you understand the method you'll probably not find yourself feeling so crazy there's method in the madness um so yeah, and then there's a final image in here as well, which is so beautiful. Um, this is an image here of the carving of Christ. You can see the four creatures, a lion, a bull, an eagle, and a man. These represent the four fixed signs of the zodiac, Leo, Taurus, Scorpio, and Aquarius. In the aura around Christ, the 12 archangels of the zodiac are being invoked into this energy field. Such works of art were not created to be aesthetically pleasing. They were meant to 
um, convey instructions to make sure the information could still be found even if a language was forgotten forever. We have forgotten where we came from and we don't know where we're supposed to be going. Magic is the way to remember. And if you love tarot, you'll realize here as well, this is indicative of the world. Okay, the world card in tarot. These are the four archangels. These are the angels of the zodiac. And this is the Christ-like consciousness in the center. This realm is also um, almost like full circle, the ending, the completion of a cycle. But these guys also, um, you know, drive a chariot that takes them to the to the higher power. Um, the word of God. Let me see if I can quickly find this. Actually, they're both on, on two cards, actually. See the four corners? It's on the Wheel of Fortune, which is the halfway point of the tarot. And, and there we are. And there's the world. Okay. And this is the tattoo that I have on my right, on my arm. But if you are interested, again, in learning tarot on a more sort of week by week basis as well, I teach tarot. Don't forget to check out my new angel tarot academy dot com. I'll leave all the links to the descriptions below that as well. But when we're talking about the four archangels here, later also described as the four box you know, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the four Gospels. You know, there's so much interplay um, in regard to the essence of, you know, here's Anubis, um, you know, the wheel is turning, the wheel of fortune. Um, and then this is the completion, dancing in a wreath of victory. Your aura here is now crystallized. Your aura here is now, um, you know, it's complete. The work is complete. But, you know, everything's a circle. Life's like a circle. Everything joins up at the back. And this is kind of like a final image. It's sort of to then also to lead you on to other things like understanding the four fixed um, signs, what that means, why it's there, um, the four stars. There's there's just so much to it. You can continue to go on and on. And I might do more videos about it as well. Um, so, yeah, so that's the book. And then the introduction, um, chapter one, Angels of the Elements. There's a reference here. Books here, uh, The Hidden Power of Beauty, What is Super Radiance Effect? I posted that on my Facebook, actually. Mind Training, John Michael Greer, Calling on Angels, Rick Hansen. And I'd also suggest as well, if you're interested, I also put in here uh, Ludwig van Beethoven, Beethoven, the man and the artist, as revealed in his own words. Um, so there's lots of references here. Damon Brand as well. This is a book that I'm using at the moment um, to invoke 72 angels of the Shem operation, uh, angels of power. Um, yeah, there's tons of stuff. This is a really this is a really great starting point, guys. So this is the end of the video. I know it was a bit of a long one. Uh, I'll put this back together. And I hope you really enjoy it. Um, Damien has a YouTube channel. You can sort of follow him there. He's also got a Patreon if you want to sort of catch up with him uh, when he posts on a regular basis. Um, you know, he is accessible, but at the same time, you know, he is sort of, um, you know, if you want to sort of interact with him, um, it's best that you join Patreon um, because you can sort of, you know, listen to him there and go through different thoughts and processes. He is also at the moment um, obviously wanting to appeal and um, prove his innocence. Um, again, I'll leave the documentaries and everything below that you can find out all about him leading up to these two books. He's also got another book out called Ritual, um, and he's got um, some love letter books as well between him and his wife, and now he was married on, uh, in death, on death row as well, which is another story for another time. So guys, I hope you really enjoyed the book reviews today, um, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.